You see, it's all by a reason. Reason. And the Scripture said in Corinthians, as plain as day, and it's a law, and the law that works with a mathematical and a scientific precision, that the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Really, to that natural man, those things of the Spirit of God are what to him? Foolishness, sure. That's why the natural man, if you talk to him about prayer, or if you talk to him about signs, miracles, and wonders, the natural man, by pure reason, would have to say, it's baloney, it's no good, it's a bunch of hogwash, because by the natural mind that man cannot, he cannot, no matter how sincere he is, sincerity is no guarantee for truth, he just cannot know the things of God, because it's an entirely different category. It's foolishness on him. Neither can he know them. He cannot know them, because things of the spiritual realm must be discerned how? Spiritually. That's why I said to you that since that spiritual realities may be ascertained, but sense knowledge facts may be an analyzed. These things are tremendous when you put them together. You see, this natural knowledge deals with the information gathered via the five senses. But this other kind of knowledge has to do with the spirit. And you can call it spiritual knowledge. Now the spiritual hunger in people is just as real as the physical or the mental hunger. And I would like to say to you from my experience through the years, I believe that the spiritual hunger is many times greater than the physical or the mental. And because people are looking for a spiritual answer they are going to every avenue and category to find it, except the one place where you ultimately get it, in the integrity and the accuracy of God's Word. But I believe that that spiritual hunger is tremendous. And remember what Jesus said in Matthew, I believe it is 4.4, 4, I think it's also recorded in the Gospel of Luke, man shall not live by what? Bread alone, which means he little, needs a little bit, need a little bit of bread, food, right? Else you ladies couldn't go like that, or like this. <laughs> Man shall, I like you, so don't go home. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the what? mouth of God. So there are two th types of food man needs. One is physical food, and the other is spiritual food. And this man, this man by the five senses, that man by the five senses cannot know God, for God is spirit. But if this man is born again of God's spirit, he's body, he's soul, and he is spirit. And this spirit is eternal life. This is God in Christ in the man, and this man having spirit, now God being spirit, God can again talk to him. And this is why the man can discern. This is an answer to some of the things you and I were talking about this afternoon. I didn't know then it would all come up tonight, but there it is, honey. Plain as the nose on my face. She said, well, how does he know? Well, how do I know? God tells me. That's how I know. And if God doesn't tell me, I'm just as stupid as anybody else. But when God's Spirit is in a man, God is not stupid. And God, being Spirit, can talk to my Spirit, which is His Spirit in me. And as God speaks to this Spirit which is in me, I happen to also be body and what? soul, and part of this body and soul of me is mind. Somebody said not very much in him, but it's at least there. I like him. That's like that fellow wondered one time if I fell out of the cradle when I was born, or shortly after I was born. Fell on my head, he thought. But it's all right. I asked him if he fell someplace else. <laughs> we had a great round. Round three, two, four, this kind of thing. Look. God's Spirit teaches my spirit, and since this is in me, I also have mind, so the Spirit teaches my mind, and that's how I know. This is what God, God never meant for the church to be stupid. You know that? He said the church was not to be ignorant. Not to be ignorant. And yet many times I believe we've just been about as ignorant as you can get. Because, you see, via the senses, 
We can learn a lot of wonderful things, like we can learn the Bible, I can teach you the renewed mind via the senses, but do you know something? I can't really lead you to getting any information from God outside of that which is revealed. You by your own self are going to have to learn the techniques which God gives in His Word on how to receive revelation so God's Spirit can speak to your spirit, which is His Spirit in you. It's now your spirit because it's a gift. And as God gives that revelation, that is spiritual knowledge. That is knowledge which is acquired not via the five senses, but via the Spirit. And that's what the Scripture means when it says, Holy men of God spake as they were moved by what? The Holy Spirit. This is why when Paul said in Galatians, you ought to look it up, Corinthians, Galatians, it's in the New Testament. Galatians chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 11, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after what? Man. It's, that, he, that he preached was not after man. If he'd have preached it after man, he would have had, had to have learned it from man, right? Like Reverend Crone said of what he learned at Ohio State. This was taught to him by man. Paul says that the gospel which he preaches is not after what? Man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I what? Taught it, but by what? Revelation of whom? If he wasn't taught it, if he didn't receive it from man, then there has to be another media whereby a person can learn, right? That's the media I've drawn here on the board. It is when God's Spirit teaches his creation in you, which is now your spirit, and your spirit teaches your mind, which is part of the body and soul, and then it comes into manifestation. It's difficult for most men today to learn to live by the spirit side or the faith side. You know why? Because man has so long lived by the five senses, it's hard for him to believe what God's Word says and really start doing it. Power for abundant living came down again. We're going to have to put this on there to stay. This must be my night up here, huh? I tell you, I'm glad you're all in a good humor. And I thought when these fellows set this stage for me tonight, they had everything in order. And you know, uh, last week we had a big staff meeting. I'll tell you about staff meeting. And they read, they just were all over me. And a great group of people we got. They're always concerned about me. And they said, Dr. Werwell, the trouble with you is you just don't allocate enough responsibility to people. And then you just don't let it go when you allocate it. They didn't just all say it in this much words, but I can read the writing on the wall. And they said, why don't you let some of the people carry this load? Well, I do. Down it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love each other, don't we? We're a great bunch. Well, people, I've learned long ago that if you're going to do something, you better do it well. Somebody, somebody once said it's just, uh, uh, why, 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 how do you put that? Uh, it's funny that you can't do it right the first time, but you can always take time to do it the second time. Uh, you haven't got time to do it right the first time, but you've always got time to do it the second time. I like that. Was that right? <laughs> huh? I think that's it. <laughs> but I've always been concerned, and I suppose this is the greatness of the accuracy of the word that lives within. You see, on this word, people, I can't miss one iota. If I flip on one little thing, if that thing isn't tight, it goes down. If I were that slipshod on the Word of God, it'd never live. It lives because, ma'am, I don't budge on the Word. And it's sharp and it's clear. There could every person in this auditorium rise up tonight and say that it doesn't say what the Word it say, said, and I'd say, this is what the Word says, that's what it means, and I'd go home. And you could stand out there and argue all night and say it doesn't say it. I'd say, that's what it says, that's what it means. Because on the Word, you either are slipshod or you're acrid. And if you're slipshod, you'll never have the greatness of God's Word. That's how I feel about the whole ministry. That's like I like stuff straightened up. Sure. When you walked in here tonight, 
Somebody had swept the place beautifully, set the chairs, laid the music out, the auditorium's all set, ready to go, the lid's up on the piano, the organ's open, the music's all set. That's right. Someone had to do it. But you see, we might as well be accurate all the way down the line. And most of the Christians are slipshod. Have you ever walked inside of some of these buildings and stuff? They're brand new. Had them only a year or two. But they're never clean. They're never nice papers laying all over the place. They're the same way with the things of God, all slipshod. 